Tonight we're going to be counting Vurash of Malchut. We're uh, concluding the week of uh, the Sfirat Omer. We're concluding the entire Sfirat Omer with the week of Malchut. Yesterday we counted Chesed Jube Malchut. Yesterday was the 43rd day. And the whole week of Malchut, besides that it's concluding the entire Sfirat Omer, it's the conclusion, conclusion of everything, it's very, very important that we conclude the right way, because if you don't, then the entire six weeks, they don't have a conclusion. So, the way how I see it, when something starts and you don't finish the right way, it's almost like going ten, 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 ten. I mean, where's the ten, ten? So, you wait three, six weeks in Sfirat Omer and no conclusion, then that's not good. So everything that you start has to be concluded. And if you don't, then you leave something open in the universe. So this week, very important that you pay attention to the final week, how it needs to be done. Now, yesterday, when we were counting Chesed uh, Malchut, we were talking about the idea of that I have to be a giver, but a real giver. Not to give because I uh, want my name on the wall or because I need uh, to get uh, something from the other person, I have a motive, or that I uh, want to be the hero. I have to really give because I want to give. And you had to ask yourself, and you still have to ask yourself the question, when you do something good to a person, are you giving it with your whole heart? Or are you giving it because there's some motive there? Because I need that person to help me, and I need a letter from this person, and I'll do something good, and he'll help me. And, uh, how they say, you scratch, scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, and so forth. Giving has to be real, that you're giving for the sake of giving. So that's what we learned about Chesed Shebe Malchut, that the giving, it has to be with all my heart. Now we're going to Gvura Sheba Malchut. Gvura, there are many different ways to explain what Gvura means. But one way, based on the teachings of Kabbalah, to explain what Gvura, Gvura is the power of focusing. What's called koach harikuz, that to be able to focus my, my concentration or even my power. Most people, they don't know how to focus real good. They get distracted like that. They sit, start something, they move here, start this, move here, start that, go back to here, and... And again, chas I'm not saying this to hurt any person. I'm just making an observation. A lot of people, they don't know how to focus their energy. We spoke about that a couple times in Sfirat Omer, how to focus your energy. You started something, finish it, then move to the next thing. You started this one, finish it, move to the next thing. Unless it needs to be on a low flame, then go to do something else. Gvura will allow me to focus. And again, this is called Koach HaRikuz, the power of concentration, of focusing. Now, in general, any task that I do, I need to be focused on that. The reason why a lot of people are not productive is, like I said, they start here, get distracted, they go here, they get distracted, and then what happens is two, three hours pass, and I started a lot of things, but I didn't conclude anything. People who know how to focus themselves, then they become productive, because this task should take me 10 minutes, and this task should take me two hours, and, I'm, and I know what I need to do. And you want to become productive. Your time is very valuable. We spoke about that a few weeks ago, how valuable my time is. And I don't want my time to run throughout my hands. Most people come at 10 o'clock at night. Oh my God, where did the day go? Most people come Thursday. Thursday? I mean, it was just Sunday. Oh, where was the, where's the week? So I need to know how to focus myself. Why? Because I have a mission to do. And sometimes I have 100 missions to do today. I have to do A, B, and C. I like working with lists because when I have a list, I know what I need to do. I already make the list the night before, the week before, everything is organized. I know today what I'm doing from 10 to 11, from 10, 11 to 12, everything is organized. I need to focus on my mission. Now, who technically needs the highest level of focusing? If you want to now uh, kind of uh, generalize in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in theory, of course, of course also being practical, but who would you think would be the person that needs to have the highest level of focus? then I would say the king. In our generation, we don't have a king, so we have a, uh, a president, a prime minister. You would think, I'm talking about a real one, not the fake ones. You would think that the top of the top 
he will need to have the highest level of concentration. Can you imagine how many tasks the king has? How many tasks the general has, the chief of staff, the prime minister? So we're in the week of Malchut, so we're talking about a king, not about a general. The king has to have the highest level of being focused. Here a minute, here a minute, here a minute, here a minute, here a minute. And he needs to know how to direct this, the, the energy. Now, why a king? Because the king, a real king, needs to concentrate on the needs of everybody in the nation. Try to once follow, if, if it would be, would be possible, the, the day of a president. And just imagine how it is. So many advisors around him. This meeting is two minutes. This meeting is 30 seconds. This meeting is a minute. The person comes, how about this and that? Yes, sign. That's it, next. How about this and this? No. Right? This is the way of how I think. Just imagine how a king is operating. Now, and again, we're all talking now in theory how I can relate with it later in my life. A king needs to focus on the needs of all the people in his nation. The army, the government, the poor people, the rich people, the business, the taxes, everything. So, there are two general details that one, the king, the real king, needs to focus on. The needs of the nation of this world and also the needs of the world to come. Not only in this world, it's important in this world, but also the needs in the world to come. Now, I spoke many, many times that every time that we reach to the Sfira of Malchut, last week was Malchut Sheba Esod, before that Malchut of Netzach and so forth, every time I mentioned that we are a small king, each and every one of us is a king of my own domain. So in my kingdom, then I have a wife, and I have kids, and I have workers, and I have students, or whatever. I'm a king in my little domain, and I need to worry about everybody's needs. So forget about now friends, students, workers. Let's just concentrate in my little house. There's a wife, she has needs. There's kids, they have needs. There's a lot of them. This kid's needs is this, and this kid needs is that. He needs shoes today, he needs today help with his homework. This kid has a test. Everybody has needs. So me as the king of my own domain, I have to worry about the needs of everybody, preferably before my own needs. Each one needs to get their needs. Now, this is where I'm worrying about the needs in this, in this world. But I also want to worry about their needs in the world to come. Don't say a lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't take. Come with me to, to shul, to pray. I need to worry about their needs in the world to come. So this is when we're trying to create some type of uh, uh, imaginary system in my mind. We're looking at the king, the real king, then he has to focus on his nation. Now I'm the king. How am I focusing on the needs of the people around me, both in this world and in the world to come? Since we're in the week of Malchut, the whole idea behind Malchut is, is leadership that I'm a leader, that I'm a king, that I'm, I'm, I'm taking charge, I'm taking control. Everybody has to be a leader at some point. Even though a lot of people says, listen, I don't want to do anything. You run the shots, you tell me what to do, I'll do. But at the end of the day, we spoke about it already, that we all have the power in us. This is called the power of Malchut, that I'm a leader too. Even if I'm leading two people, it doesn't matter. But I'm the leader, I'm the one who's calling the shots. And not only that, that it's uh, built in us, we also have that desire. Most people, I will call it now in an extreme way, are lazy and they don't want to take charge. Some people, they, they can't do anything but taking charge. But nevertheless, inside of us, not only do I have the power to lead, I also have the desire to lead. And to lead the right way, of course. What does it mean to lead the right way? It means to do chesed and kindness. To do acts of charity, acts of kindness, and to do good to other people. That's a good leader. That I take charge and I help you and I help you and I help you and so forth. Now, if there's only chesed, so yesterday we were counting chesed jiba malchut, unbelievable kindness. I just give and give and give and give. That's not good, because too much chesed, then it gets spread around. It doesn't get stay contained. The Kabbalistic term to it is called hitpashtut ha'or, spreading of the light. So I don't want it to spread, I want it to stay in one place. Imagine now you go now to a wine store, and they tell you we have a very special wine, ooh, a very expensive wine. So you tell them, okay, I will want some. Listen, we have it in a barrel and we don't have bottles for it. So you need to bring something to take the wine with you. If you just tell them, give me the wine, and they open the faucet, all the wine just spills. Whoa, 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 no, no, I don't want it to spread. I need it in a contained, in a bottle or in a cup. So bring a cup, bring a bottle. So when something spreads too much, 
a Kabbalistic term to it, it's called Hitpashtut Eor, that the light it just gets spread. This is when it's too much chesed, that's not good. It doesn't, uh, it's not focused. And then it's all over the place. So too much chesed is not good. What do I need? I need to apply gvura. The gvura will be focusing, where is that chesed going to? Imagine now a rich person has millions of dollars. He hires a gabai to tell the gabai, every person that wants to, uh, uh, help, you, he comes to you, he tells you the situation, we give a check. Now imagine the gabai will give to everybody a million dollars, million dollars, million dollars. Whoa, 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 the money will run out. He just needs a thousand. He doesn't need a million. And he needs 2,000 and he needs 500. You give every person according to what they need. I don't have to just give because we have. So I need to know how to go down to details. And the details are where, how, what, who. This is the gvura, Sheba Malchut, that I want to give. But it has to be focused. It has to be where am I giving the energy? I give right now, if I'm again, to give you an example from a private life, not from a king's life. Then if I have kids, this kid needs 10 minutes right now. This kid needs an hour. This kid has a big test. I have to sit with him. I'll sit with you tomorrow because today I have to do this. I need to know where, where it's going to. Can't uh, just uh, sit with one kid for two hours and then neglect the other one that actually needs me today because tomorrow there's a big test. I need to know how to focus my energy. This is called Gvua Sheba Malchut. Malchut is the, the desire to give, as to be the leader, to run the show. And the gvura is how much I'm giving every person. I can guarantee to you that many people, you know, not too long ago somebody uh, emailed us, and uh, I always say it out loud because people sometimes get very offended. They email me and I don't answer them. First of all, I don't check emails. I get, on an average day, between 1,500 to 3,000 emails. That's the amount of emails we get every day from all around the world, coming funneling from social media, from emails, from WhatsApps, whatever. That's the amount of messages that are coming every day. I don't even check emails. I don't check WhatsApp messages. So we have a crew, a few girls, and they check all the emails and they filter them. This email doesn't need to occur to me. They answer this and send it all around. Now, of course, a lot of people have questions. A lot of people, I don't even answer all these questions. I don't have time to answer all these questions. I have hundreds of emails coming every day, just questions. So other people can answer the questions, not me. I don't need to answer every little question. But nevertheless, many people also say, I'm coming to Tzad, I want to meet the rabbi. Okay, you have 10 minutes. 10 minutes? What am I going to do with 10 minutes? Well, there's another 500 people. So the other day, somebody emailed, I'm coming to Tzad on this day, can I see the rabbi? Yes. I need three hours. Three hours? If you get 10 minutes, you're lucky. What do you mean 10 minutes? What am I going to say in 10 minutes? Well, what do you think? You're the only one in the world. There are many others. And the time is very limited. If I would give now, imagine I would sit now with a person three hours. You know, not too long ago, when I was on one of my tours, somebody emailed us and said, I will give the rabbi $10,000. I want to hang out with him. Wow. What do you mean hang out with him? What are you gonna, what do you mean hang out with him? I'm going to give the rabbi $10,000. I want to hang out with him for the whole day. No, you can't. Because when I come to a tour, that everybody wants to have a, a, a five-minute meeting, a 10-minute meeting, 20-minute meeting. I mean, hang out with him. You have two million dollars. What does it matter? It's not about the money. So, if I, not only me, any person gives, no? <laughs> he also wants the time of my time. <laughs> if you give too much here without any limits, then here suffers. And the right way is to, where can I give my time? How can I spread my, my day? And I'm giving you examples from my own life because I can only give examples from my own life. You take it to your own life and you decide how do I focus my chesed. Because the nature of the king of Malchut is chesed, is to give. To give, a real king is a giver. I'm not talking about the kings, that are the, I'm talking about a real king. David the Melech, Yosef the Melech. These are the real kings that I need to have some type of an image. Moshe was a king. David Amelech was a king, a real king. David Amelech was all about giving. Moshe was all about giving. Think Moshe took a vacation. Think Moshe had some uh, time to rest all day long. He was giving. He was giving his time, giving his knowledge, giving his effort, and so forth. A real king is all about giving. So Malchut is the desire and the ability to give. The Gvura Shebe Malchut is how am I focusing my chesed. So yesterday I told you, you must do chesed. There's no, there's no way out of it. There's no such a thing that you can't 
live your life and at one day out of your life and not do something to another person. I said in the last class about Chesed of Malchot that if I found myself comes the end of the day and I cannot point on something good that I did to another person, then don't go to sleep. How can you pass a whole day and not do some type of act of kindness? In my, in my uh, library, it's minimum five a day. You don't do five acts of kindness a day. Don't go to sleep. What do you think Hashem is expecting you right now? To run after Parnassah? Hashem says, I'll worry about your Parnassah. Don't worry about it. Hashem says, you just now do acts of kindness and learn Torah. I quoted last class that it says in the, in the Talmud, in Tractate Sanhedrin, that we are about to go into a massive war. And you have to be a total ignorant not to see that we're going into the war. I don't know if you even read the headlines here in Israel. The Israelis attacked a, 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 a Iran bases in Syria tonight. Just tonight. I don't know if you heard the jets. I was up till late. I heard the jets. And you wake up in the morning. You heard them too? Yeah. So, and in the morning, you wake up in the morning, you open the news, and Israel attacked I, I, Iranian bases in Damascus, Damascus, because yesterday Syria shot two missiles into Israel. They fell in the Hermon. You have to be completely ignorant not to see that we're walking in, we, we're going into a war. I'm not worried about anything. David the Melech says, A thousand will fall here, ten thousand will fall here, nothing will go to you. So, but nevertheless, the Talmud gives us instructions. A person wants to, be, to survive this war called Gogu Magog. Yasok Torah, should learn Torah, and acts of kindness. That's it. That's your ticket. Learn Torah. Two to five hours every day. And I know it's I know a lot of people raise two, two hours. Yeah, two hours. You're two hours on Facebook. So be five minutes on Facebook and two hours learn Torah. So stop watching that, uh, cats break dancing and all this junk that they have there. So learn Torah two to five hours and you'll find the time. So watch a little bit less TV. Or, you know, I don't want to say it because people get offended. Stop talking to Shonara. Shonara takes at least two hours a day. So zip your mouth and you have, you have a lot of time to learn Torah. Because all day long, did you hear what they said? What did he said like this? What are you talking about? Do you know what I heard about this one? So if you cut the Shonara, I guarantee you, you have at least another hour a day. So learn Torah. Two to five hours, five minutes a day is nothing. And, yeah, asok big milut chasadim. Dug milut chasadim, acts of kindness. It doesn't mean that you have to open a soup kitchen. But you can find a lot, a lot of people to help them, genuinely help them. Not because I want to thank you, not because I want money, not because I want gratification, gratitude, or recognition. You do a real act of kindness. So again, Gvura Sheba Malchut is taking all this desire and the will for me to help another person, but to focus it. Sometimes five minutes here is enough. I don't need more than that. I told you already, when I always go on to, the, to, to tours, soon I'm going to another two tours, and we always book a lot, lot of meetings before. And a lot of people say, I want three hours. No, I'll do three hours, you get half an hour, that's the max. Ten minutes to half an hour. But I need an hour. And I always say, you don't need. This is just schmoozing. The answer, the question should be two minutes, the answer is seven minutes. That's it, ten minutes and we're done. Don't need to make a whole cup of coffee here. And how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great, how are you? So you need to know how to focus the energy. The Gvura Sheba Malchut is to focus the Chesed. It's to take all this Chesed, but to focus it here five minutes, here ten minutes, here an hour, here two hours, whatever it needs. Now I need to, uh, so to say, Livchon, to test, what is the need of that person? Sometimes the person doesn't need much. They want. That's a whole different thing. I have six kids, Baruch Hashem. You know what it means just to spread my time on six kids? Besides everything else around me, I, I, my kids also deserve my attention. Just to give five minutes to each one, that's already half an hour. Half an hour, I know for some people it's like, well, what's half an hour? For me, half an hour? You know what half an hour is? That's, what, that's the amount of time I sleep. So um, they can get five minutes. This one needs 20 minutes. This one needs 20 minutes. This one has a test. They need to sit with me half an hour. All my boys, I learn with them. So I'm just talking about my kids right now, no people around me. But I need to know, today this kid needs much more time. He had a hard day in school, somebody bullied him, I need to hang out with him. This boy is doing good, okay, you need two minutes. Whatever it is, I'm, I know it sounds very technical, I'm just giving some examples, because to, to talk in theory is one thing, but to see how it actually works, that's a whole different thing. So I need to constantly, I don't know the right word in English, in Hebrew you say livchon, livchon means to test, to analyze. 
how much time every person needs. Right now, my wife needs a lot of attention, whatever, for whatever reason. This person right now needs a lot of attention. So, what we need to focus on is how to focus my time. Especially the chesed that I give. I have to give a lot of chesed. If you looking at yourself and you can't summarize every day that you did a lot of acts of kindness, you're missing a big part in your Avodat Hashem. Now, now we're focusing on Tikkun Amidot, not on Gogu Magog, but nevertheless, I need to find a lot of time a day that I do acts of kindness, because that is my ticket out. Only acts of kindness. I mean, learn Torah, like we started the class when I told you that a lot of people are failing because they don't know the Halachot. You have to learn Torah. Even if you do it in small increments, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, 15 minutes in the evening, 15 minutes at night, boom, you have an hour. But nevertheless, I also have to focus my chesed. Bear in mind that in a week exactly is Shavuot. Exactly a week from now is the holiday of Shavuot. Now we, what are we celebrating? That we got the Torah. How was the Torah given? Torah was given from the mouth, so to say, of the Gvura. Mipia Gvura. We got the, the Torah by Gvura, not by Chesed. Now, even though the Torah is full of Chesed, the Torah is full of kindness, but nevertheless, the Torah can only give kindness when it's focusing on Gvura. And if you see, look at the Torah, yeah, there's a lot of kindness in the Torah, a lot of Chesed. But it cannot be given and it cannot be focused. All the Torah is about focusing, can only come from Gvura. So I need to know how to focus in my life my energy. Today we're talking about kindness and chesed, but anything. And this is Gvurashi Bemalchut. Practically saying, so we have some homework, is you have to ask yourself constantly if you're able to focus your good desires. How many times you wanted to do something and you didn't do it? Something good. I'm not talking now opening the next uh, startup, uh, the next new Facebook. Talking about that how many times you want to do something good, you have a good desire. We all have good desires, good wills. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. But then nothing happens. And I'm not talking about now opening a big uh, soup kitchen, and I'm not talking, I'm talking about little things that you say that you want to do and you don't really do. And even if it's just for yourself, how many times I see people in a class sitting, I just said, learn halachot, I see the wheels turning, you know, that's a good idea. I'm going to start learning, and you're already, you're pumping it up in your mind, and you're all pumped up now, I'm going to start learning, I'm going to buy a book, I'm going to start learning 10 minutes a day, that's a brilliant idea, and it's cooking in your mind for two, three days, and somehow evaporates from the front of your brain, and you totally forget about it, till you come to the next class, ah, I wanted to learn some halachot. So, you have to ask yourself how many times, or not only how many times, am I able to focus my good desires to actually do them. How many times you wanted to do something and you actually didn't do that? There's a lot of good will, there's a lot of good desire in my mind. I want to do a lot of good things. Now the question is if it's actually done. And don't think big. Thinking big then takes much more energy. Think small. And the question you want to ask yourself, am I able to get it done? So if you want to do practically something, we talked about learning halachot, take on yourself, say, you know, that's a good idea. I'm going to learn five halachot every day. Five, you know, I need to now open uh, uh, the whole Shulchan Aruch. Five halachot, go to the Judaica store across the street, buy a book of halachot, learn five halachot a day, and, 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 and keep to it. Now you have a good desire, now see if you can focus and actually do that. And this is the Gvurah Sheba Malchut. It's about focusing on the good things that I need to do, but actually doing them. And needless to say that I'm the one who benefits from that. The point to take from that is not to disregard the little details. A lot of people, they're looking at the big picture, they're not f focusing on the little details. If you don't focus on the little details, you'll never focus on anything in the, in the, in the picture. You need to have the ability to focus on little things. That's how you're able to go to bigger things. And the focusing, that's the key to any success, whether it's relationship, business, spiritual growth, whatever it is. If you know how to focus and to see the little details, that would be your key to the success. Not to look too broad, because, you know, in Hebrew there's a term, our sages say, tafasta merube lo tafasta. You try to grab too much, you're not going to grab nothing. Like a person going to the market and he starts putting oranges. You can take like this, ten oranges, put another two, bloop, they all fall down. This is tafasta merube lo tafasta. Try to grab too much at the same time, you're not going to grab anything. 
So the idea is how do I focus on the little details and get it done. Once I'm done with the little details, you'll see that by default, I'm growing and growing and growing. That's why we spoke about many times that many good, successful businessmen, entrepreneurs, generals, whatever it is. Why? They know how to focus the time. Time is very, very focused. I spoke about that two weeks ago when we learned about the time. My time is so calculated. And on the minute, you know, I don't, I don't sit and have a cup of coffee and, hey, let's meet for coffee. I, I don't sit on a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee is as I'm doing something. I don't waste my time. Not because I'm a big shot, because my time is valuable. And I want to, to make sure that my time is focused. Here, five minutes. It doesn't need more than five minutes. Move on. Next. Next. Yeah. You know, I know it sounds very mechanical and like a machine. But my day is extremely productive. And not because I don't sleep, because everything has its time. Mm -hmm. Everything has the, the amount of time that needs to be done. This is five minutes at four. This is an hour at six. And more than that, it's focusing on the little details. It's know how to see, not the big picture. It's to stand in front of 500 details and look at one detail and says, that's the detail right now that needs my attention. Next I'll do this, next I'll do that, next I'll do this. This is the power of Gvurash Malchut. We all have it in us. Now you need to know how to bring it up to the surface. The simple way to doing it is you take little tasks you focus on these little tasks and you do them. And the tasks, I'm not talking about going to, to your shopping today. That's not what I'm talking about. It's tasks of acts of kindness. Where can I help here? Where can I help here? Once a week I volunteer here. Once a day I do this. Once a day I do that. It has to be focused. And if you're not focusing on kmilut chasadim, on acts of kindness, you're missing the biggest part of your spiritual growth, of getting closer to Hashem and making the world a much better place. It's all about doing chesed. And the chesed, like I told you, has to be done with no, with no agenda, with no uh, uh, a motive behind it. It has to be done for the sake of giving. This is the short version of Gvurashe Bamalchut.